Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith and today I want to talk to you about a updated feature in Oracle REST Data Services to support the Open API or Swagger style uh, documentation format. So quickly, what is ORDS? ORDS is Oracle REST Data Services. It's a technology that comes free or included with your Oracle database. What is REST? Well, it's a way for applications to talk to each other, generally over HTTP, although uh, in today's uh, world you always want to use HTTPS, which ORDS definitely uh, supports. It's an architectural style, so instead of using something um, like XML and SOAP, uh, we're going to use uh, HTTP to uh, make requests to a resource uh, using a set of verbs like get, post, put, delete, which if that sounds like a crud, uh, uh, it, that's exactly what it is. And we're going to get a set of response codes back that are always going to be the same across this model. So when something's good or works the way you expect, you get a 200. Uh, when something can't be found or isn't quite expected, you're going to get a 300 or 400. And when something really bad happens and some completely breaks, you get a, a 500 back. Uh, we're stateless, so I can do a git, you know, as many times as I want on an object. Uh, if I do a uh, put into a resource, it's always going to add a, a new record uh, or a new uh, item into that resource. And to encourage the stateless behavior, we're very hyperlink driven. So responses generally always include links to where we come from or what the next place to go to to continue the step uh, in, your, in your process is. And what ORDS does is it allows you to have a, um, a connector basically from your web server to your database. So you might have um, Apache set up for your web application and then you're going to have behind that maybe a uh, Tomcat in order to serve or run um, ORDS. Or if you'd like, and what's completely supported, is ORDS can run as a standalone application and includes an embedded Jetty web server. I think that's actually really ideal for developers just getting started um, with ORDS and uh, Oracle Database. But at the end of the day, ORDS is going to get uh, the request that comes in off HTTP or HTTPS. And that request is going to have a URI in it, so like a slash this, slash that. And ORDS has a mapping of databases that it serves, and it has a mapping of resources in those databases that it serves, and it can translate that URI, so that slash x, slash y, slash notation, and it can translate that into either a SQL or a PL SQL block that serves those get, post, put, and delete um, operations or verbs on those objects in the database. So if I do a git on slash ords slash hr slash employee slash ords knows to turn that into a on for this database a select star from hr employees. Um, so that's all happening over a connection pool that ords has running from that mid-tier or from your laptop running ords as a as a standalone app into your database and so it's talking normal database language with the database. So it can do anything the database can do. Um, and the database sends the results back to ORGE, just like if you were running stuff in SQL Plus or SQL Developer or your PHP apps or whatever. And then ORGE, instead of sending that data right back down to uh, your client, which might be your web application, your mobile app, or even a, a, a bash script using curl commands, it first translates that into uh, the JSON uh, data format, which seems to be the ubiquitous way of uh, communication or communicating uh, data now, especially in the REST world. And if you've ever seen any uh, JavaScript applications out there today, you know it's all about the JSON. Okay, so ORDS, uh, it's running somewhere in the mid-tier where your web server is. It's got connections to your database, and it knows how to take a HTTP request and translate that into a workload in the database and then it can take that output or result set 
and uh, format that back to JSON and send it back to your client. All right, so uh, assuming you've got a uh, RESTful service published for words to um, handle something in your database, how do you share that with others? And that's what I really want to talk about today is communicating um, the REST API that you've spent many hours or days handcrafting or even in some cases many <laughs> many seconds building um, and giving it to others so they can use it themselves or even sharing it with other application stacks so it can programmatically discover uh, what APIs are available to be called. So uh, what I want to look at very quickly um, we have the HR schema, the ubiquitous, very old human resources schema. And inside that we have the departments table. And I want to use a feature in ORDS called um, AutoREST to publish an API for this table. So I want to be able to select from the table, create uh, new departments, uh, update existing departments, delete records out of departments. So with ORDS already configured for this database and schema, I can simply right click on departments and say enable REST service. And I'm going to create an alias for this table so we're not exposing the table name outside the database. And now it's good. So I come over to my browser and I'm going to ask ORDS so I'm running the standalone, so that's why I'm on localhost, and it's listening on port 8888. Slash ORDS puts us in REST mode versus uh, Apex mode. Slash, ASR, slash HR tells ORDS what database and schema we're going to. And the metadata catalog call says, get for me all of the RESTful services uh, under HR. So this is not a new feature. This has been in there for quite a long time. And if I scroll down to departments and saying, yeah, here's a service that we're taking care of. And this is how you get to the service. But what I want to look at is this. This describes um, the service itself. And if you look at the media type for this, open API, which is what the swagger stuff is. So I'm going to click on this. And it's going to go get for me the Swagger style or the Open API uh, compliant spec. So machines can read this quite easily. They know what to expect. They know what to look for. And they're going to be able to figure out, oh, this has got a, a get. And it's got a post. And it's got a put. And it's got a delete. And this is how... Uh, puts are going to be processed and these are what the expected uh, response codes are going to be. What we want to be able to do is make a human readable version of that. So if you come to editor swagger IO this is a very nice uh, web client where you can literally just paste in or load up a file of the JSON can't remember if I copied that. Yep. So copy that. I'm going to right click and say paste. Oops, it helps if you copy the right thing. Fix that in post. Yep. Copy. Paste. All right. So it's offering to convert this JSON into the YAML format. I'm going to say cancel because I want it to stay in the JSON so you can see where it came from. It supports both. And I think actually JSON's a little bit easier to read. So over here on the left, we have the data that came out of ORDS. And over here on the right, we have the really nice API doc set on the service. Okay, so here are all of the verbs we have available on our department's uh, resource via REST. So I can get all of the records. I can get a specific record. I can make changes to a specific record. I can delete a specific record. And I can post up a new record. And when I click on one of these, it shows us 
um, the details. And what's very nice here is that we are describing for you, for example, the payload required. So when you do this post in the body, you need to attach uh, a JSON record describing the record that you're inserting. And the response that come back will be a 200. And a bonus, you know, this isn't just uh, an easily read um, documentation uh, output. It also has a REST client built in. So I can fill in this data here, list records, social media. Oh, locations. I don't have location IDs memorized, but that's okay. We'll say 1700. Actually, we're going to change a record with this put. So let's change Let's change treasury because that one looks boring. And we'll say one, we'll say 1700 for location ID. And manager ID is going to be 200. Okay. So we are going to make changes to uh, department ID 120, and this are the changes that are going up. And you can see that this is going to go to here. So let's run it. <laughs> Just because REST is easy doesn't mean it allows you to violate your relational constraints. Integrity constraint, parent key not found, location. Did I use a location that wasn't kosher? When you're an idiot, demos are hard. So I'm actually glad we're able to showcase that we're not breaking the rules of the database. Let's try that again. Server response, 200. Here's the record that comes back, and here are those ubiquitous links. This is really easy to read, I think, and, and play with. And if we just come back over to our table and refresh the record, which was uh, 120, it's not going to be Treasury anymore. It's now social media, so that's going to confuse some people in the morning when they come into work, but that's okay. And we'll just try one more. Let's go try this one out too. Let's go get record public relations. I'm sure it's going to be calling me after this video goes out. There's our record. So again, Swagger style, or the open API compliant uh, documentation for your REST APIs served by Oracle REST data services makes it very easy for not only you to build RESTful services in your Oracle database, but to communicate those with other developers and um, application stacks that know how to read JSON.
Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.